Hello, good evening, and welcome back. So this is where anti-racism costs lives. So as they say, I didn't want people to think I was racist. A security guard aged 18 and earning £4.24 an hour did not confront Manchester Arena Bomber for fear of being branded a racist before the terrorist killed 22. Yes, the threat level was severe. Yes, they did have protocols in place. Yes, this was radioed in by another Middle Eastern gentleman to pass along to the gentleman here in question, Kyle Lawler, who was the security guard for the Oriana Grande concert in Manchester, but he did not pass it on because what had happened was that one parent there thought, oh, this man looks a bit dodgy, let's tell it to a security guard, and felt he got fobbed off because a security guard was guarding a fire exit and wasn't allowed to leave it, so this was radioed along to somebody else in this case, Kyle Lawler, who then thought, hmm, yeah, okay, I know what I'm supposed to do, but I'm also aware of the consequences of being branded a racist, and therefore I'm going to cost my job, I'm at the start of my new career, I don't think it's a good idea. Chances of this actually happening, yes, it's severe, yes, we know it happens elsewhere, the chances of it actually happening here are negligible, Therefore, it's best I don't do anything, because if I do do something, chances are I'm wrong, and that's going to cost me my job and my career, and I might not be able to get hired again. Therefore, it's better off just to leave it out. Of course, in response, what actually happened, well, minutes later, a buddy detonated his device, killing 22 concert goers in the fire, and injured hundreds more with his kind of Claymore device with the nuts and bolts inside a nail bomb, if you will, that kind of thing. So the main issue here is that everybody is concerned about being branded a racist. That is why there's so much fundamentalist Islam indoctrination happening within prisons, because prison guards are afraid of being called racist for stopping them. That is why Labour and the police colluded with each other to cover up the grooming gangs happening in Rotherham and Northern England, because they were also being concerned of being branded racist. That is also why girls who were found with the men are said, oh, they definitely knew what they were getting into. They were asking for it. They were prostitutes. They were drug traffickers. They were trying to recruit other girls. That kind of thing because of fears of being branded racist. This is not a new story, if you will. It's the same story, but it's just different actors. It's just this one has come to the fore because it is the biggest terrorist attack in the UK in recent history. And therefore, it's going to be drawing more attention. And you've got to think, well, how often does this kind of thing happen and is not reported on because nothing does happen? Or that the consequences are so minor in comparison that it, this doesn't get the level of media attention that it actually deserves. And... That is why we always call for equal treatment under the law and we do not care about this racism that they claim and that yes you will have individuals that are racist in which case hey if you're doing things which look dodgy and would be called out for anybody who regardless of their race for doing then you will be questioned if you found out to be innocent then we will apologize but hey you can understand that your behavior did cause some questions to be raised, especially given the current threat level that we're under, in which case we do apologise, we hope you enjoy the rest of your evening, hopefully you can understand why we had to do this, and hopefully you also feel safer knowing that we are treating everybody the same way. That is the best way to deal with it. But when you do not have the government behind you, when you do not have the law behind you, when you do not have the political will behind you, this can be incredibly daunting, especially for an 18 year old who seems to have had insufficient training, inadequate training in how to deal with these instances, who does not know that he will have his employer behind him, because a lot of these times they don't. They will find their scapegoat, which is one 18 year old at the time, who's just a cheap hire who will do the job because, hey, they have to have it, but they don't want it, therefore we'll just outsource it because who cares? And that will be their response, and hey, as long as it's legal, it doesn't matter because everybody else will be going by the minimum required by the law because the law is there. So either increase the law so that people have to do more, or you get rid of the law, and that enables the competition between 
the companies in order to then provide a better service because hey are you happy paying five percent more if you're reassured that you're not going to be killed chances are yes they are the two options available there or you get the government to enforce it so you have to pay 20 percent more either one same result so as carl lola says it made me hesitant i wanted to get a right and not mess it up by overreacting or judging someone by their race paul greeny qc counsel to the inquiry said if you were to approach him and it was some innocent kid people might think you're a racist he replied yes but the suicide bomber dressed in all black carrying a large bulky rucksack was reported by concerned parent christopher wilde who thought it looked dodgy and had asked the betty what he had in his backpack wilde told the inquiry he felt fobbed off when he raised the matter to security but mr but Mr. Mohammed Aga said he could not immediately pass on the concerns as he was guarding a fire exit and it was practice never to leave those unattended. So, this always comes down to saying, well, you've got to do what you think is right. You've got to do what is best. And it's kind of like the Jimmy Carr joke to say that, yeah, officially, officially, the highest terror threat in the UK is imminent. But we all know what it actually is, is, I don't care if it looks racist, but... That Middle Eastern man with a rucksack is saying his prayers a little bit racist, a little bit loud, and so I'm getting off the bus. <laughs> that's that's it in a very British way. And there definitely has to be some more support for being able to apply the law equally and not punish people if there is a concern that somehow, somewhere, somehow along the line, they did it based on a race. But as always, let me know what you th- guys think down below. If you think that, no this is very different uh, because there was a report from a parent and the parents wouldn't be racist or no because there was a report from somebody else who was middle eastern in which case as long as somebody comments on somebody who has a similar ethnicity to their own then it is okay even if you're passing on the information or if they call no obviously this kind of thing needs to be stamped out and stopped immediately or at the very least as soon as possible so that we can report on people equally and have the law treating people equally and not have to discriminate or be extra careful based on particular protected special characteristics either way let me know down below as always intrigued to hear what you guys have to say and as always until next time like comment share subscribe all that good stuff and have a good one